Abraham Abulafia was born in 1240 in Zaragoza, and then he peregrinated actually almost all his life to Tudela, to Italy, to Greece, to Akko, the land of Israel, back to Greece, back to Italy, back to Spain, again back to Greece, back to Italy, and then in Sicily where he apparently died in 1291. So that's a very intense, uh, uh, what's called an itinerant scholar, or an errant scholar. He did it because uh, he was in search for other types, types of knowledge than regular. I mean, he moved from one center of culture to another and attempted to absorb and to offer synthesis between different forms of knowledge he learned. Basically, he started as a philosopher, and then he started to study Kabbalah, and he offered a synthesis between Jewish philosophy, what's called Maimonides, and between Hasidic Ashkenaz, the Lazaro forms, which is much more magical, much more ling linguistically oriented. So he started with a Greek form of knowledge, Maimonidian philosophy, which is basically Aristotle, and then he combined it with a theory which is totally different, which has to do with the power of language which is rejected by Maimonides, rejected by Aristotle. So he offered a powerful synthesis between two forms of Jewish culture. The Andalusian one, Maimonides, and the German one, which is Hasid Ashkenaz. So that, the broader picture is that two cultures, totally different, in clash, were brought together by someone who studied both of them in his youth and around the age of 31 he came with a synthesis which he attempted to disseminate in all the southern part of Europe. He did it because he believed that he is a prophet, that's the way to achieve prophecy, and he believed that he is a prophet, and even more so because he believed that he is the Messiah. So it was part of his messianic enterprise, which means that he believed that messianism was not just someone coming and bringing the Jews out of exile to a certain place. Hardly he believed it. He believed that messianism is teaching people how to rescue themselves from their body, from their exile in the matter in the body, which that is for him real redemption. So for him, the theories that I'm going to elaborate about are not just mystical techniques. They are ways to reach ecstasy, which, which he calls prophecy, which is a redemptive experience. So he believes that if he's going to teach all the people in the world, Jews or non-Jews, he is going to be the Messiah. He will save them. It doesn't mean it's going to happen in the same year. That is maybe an accumulative process. But for him, that was messianism. So his assumption is that he can bring together the idea of intellectual perfection from Maimonides with a technique, how to achieve it instantly from Elazaro forms. That's why he wrote commentaries on Maimonides' book. On the other side, he wrote commentaries on Sefer Itzira, a book which is very dear to Lazarus of Worms, and Maimonides never mentioned it, he rejected it basically, implicitly. So he attempted actually to capitalize on the two most important medieval achievements in the generation before him. So he offered a technique which has two different, how to put it, aspects. One is how, by combining letters, someone is deconstructing the normal consciousness, and in such a way he is able to open his consciousness to another form of experience, which means that by reciting letters of the divine name, and letters of the Hebrew alphabet, which are meaningless, someone is in a way deconstructing 
the notions he believes in or his worldview.